مساكم الله بالخير اتشرف بتواجدي اليوم لاول مره في هذا المبنى الجميل في اكاديميه دبي للمستقبل وطبعا احب ايضا اشكر فريق العمل على استضافتهم اسمحوا لي البرزنتيشن بيكون باللغه الانجليزيه So good evening everyone ladies and gentlemen it's such an honor to be here today and especially in this innovative uh, building beautiful building it's my first time here uh, I would like to thank uh, the team of uh, Dubai Future Academy for hosting us tonight and for us to talk about the future um, and I, I and I think there's no better place than this spot especially this spot um, and especially also in front of me is our minister of artificial intelligence the, the, he's the, the 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 real one we always joke when will we have like a, a flying hologram somewhere else and then me having <laughs> no not yet <laughs> not in culture yeah okay then <laughs> we need to discuss that after the talk um, we've been always um, asking ourselves questions and as Saeed mentioned um, there's always this definition or this this kind of puzzled questions what is culture and sometimes people will say culture is everything and of course you know you tend to say, okay, if I want to work in culture, I can't say culture is everything because I will end up not sleeping, not eating, and just working and working on everything. So um, I hope during my, my, my talk, we're gonna shed the light in terms of what culture is and, uh, and what in collaboration with local entities within the UAE, whether from Abu Dhabi to Fujairah, we're working with private sectors, with talents, with individuals, with indigenous as well uh, uh, foundations uh, that also supporting uh, the sector, the creative and cultural sector. I tend to enjoy or important for me to go back to the history of, of what, what, is, what made culture so important, what made history so important. And I feel we can't, and I, I'm seeing gentlemen with the pen of Sheikh Zayed on their kandora is not talking about the founder of this nation. So back then when, when there was the idea of the formation of the UAE, uh, and Sheikh Zayed was in the helm of it. He always said he, that who does not know his past cannot make the best of his present and future. For it is from the past that we learn. Um, and basically is, 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 is looking at culture and looking at your history and looking at your identity in a way and making sure that you're preserving it and promoting it in a way that also uh, is adaptable. Um, and not feeling, um, not feeling the risk or the danger of a new culture or a new beat of a music or a new kind of wearing your kandora or shayla and abaya. Just making sure how do we evolve, but again at the same time, standing on a, on a, on a solid ground. Um, therefore, forward thinking was uh, every is, is something that is in, uh, the essence of his leadership, is the essence of our current leadership as well. Um, uh, making uh, innovation uh, as 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 the as the cornerstone, uh, cornerstone, inclusion and tolerance as well of the country is building what we are and who we are today as Emiratis. I feel this conviction uh, as well built what we can see today, but back then we can also look at the establishment of the Ain Museum. I'm not sure if you know when what was it established. It was exact 1969. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. See, the clicker. Don't click before I. You know. So in 1969, I, 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 and and for for Sheikh Zayed to think of or to to instruct of the build of Al Ain, uh, I thought you all knew it. So I was like, wow. So so for for Sheikh Zayed to to look <laughs> to. To, to look at building this first museum before the inception of the United Arab Emirates is also a sign, is a sign that this foundation looks at what is the history of the UAE um, uh, from the Stone Age to, to the foundation in 1971. In 1970, uh, there was also uh, Sheikh Zayed uh, looking at how can Abu Dhabi be presented in Tokyo at the expo in 1971. Uh, in 1970, uh, apologies. Um, Sheikh Khalifa uh, bin Zayed was there at the inauguration uh, presenting uh, the speech of Abu Dhabi at the Expo 1970. And, and from there, you can, you can look at, again, what is your foundation? You will always look at a house. Does it have a strong foundation as an identity, as an education, as a, I don't know, as, as whatever you are trying to build? 
from a content, from a building, from an identity. There has to be always that strong foundation that we look uh, to build on and make sure that it's also standing in a solid ground. Our country was founded in such, uh, with such philosophy, the philosophy of history, heritage, and that culture should be safeguarded. Um, and preserved to the future of generation and gl global recognition. And we are striving to carry that legacy. A leader of the future. Um, when I say a leader of the future, um, I, 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 the, the first image that will occur in our uh, minds is the image of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. And saying that is also being privileged to present to him the 100-day action plan when uh, uh, I got appointed to be the Minister of, of, uh, of Culture and Knowledge Development. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid is a poet and a writer, uh, and his no own right announced that the cultural own right announced the Cultural Development Fund. For him to believe in that and to believe in the sector, he was very clear that this is a sector of the future, that creativity and culture is also um, what will take us to where we are from our museums, from the talents that we have, and from how we will enable the sector with the right policies. He believed that the, with the cultural fund, we're going to support areas that might be uh, not yet visible in the UAE, that might require us to innovate more, to invest more, to support more. Again, I'm going to uh, reiterate that whatever we're doing, we're not doing it only by the ministry, but also with our wonderful partners. We can't wait uh, to see uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid's poetry on the beautiful um, uh, museum, of the museum of the Future. Having his poetry on a museum is by itself, and the Future Museum is by itself showing that culture will be always an essence of the future. Unfortunately, our region is going through a lot of, of challenges and instability. Um, Art and culture will hold the power to connect people, transcend boundaries, and remind us of our com common grounds. Um, we're, we're also looking and participating in many conferences that instead of looking at the political angle of situations or the economical angle of situation, looking at culture and how culture also um, fight um, extremism. Um, and help also build uh, such uh, common grounds with people. This year is the year of tolerance. Um, once we were talking with certain reporters uh, during the historical visit of Pope Francis and His Holy Grace uh, Imam uh, Ahmed al-Tayyib, uh, and one of the reporters said, so why now? So why are you talking about tolerance now? It is, it, there is a brand for tolerance, but we're not doing it for a brand. We're not doing it for PR. We're doing it because we've been doing it since uh, the 60s and before the 60s. Um, in, 1960, uh, in the early 1960s, uh, the ruler of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Shabut, uh, gave a land to the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, and there was inauguration by Sheikh Zayed in 1968. So that is uh, what makes the UAE different from its projects, from the ideas that are flourishing. Uh, they're not just the ideas that flourishes from uh, from just Emiratis. I always like to picture it when, um, I mean, to, to picture this with, with the way that if you work by yourself for a year in your own gym, and all of a sudden you go to a public gym and start working out, and then you discover that you're not the strongest. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure if you, if, you, if you went through that experience. I went through that experience. Place that is multicultural cities that also welcome people from different backgrounds, differentiate from different cities and different countries. This journey is a journey that we're going to take together with Emiratis and residents of the UAE. And this is an integral part of our development, our, also the, our efforts uh, to face the cultural practices and how we can implement them. How we can implement them is, is through technology. Technology and how it aids the future of the culture. Culture is a consist, uh, the constant state, is a constant state of evolution. As I said, um, there was a uh, there's a recent song uh, where it's it's not a song that is based in the UAE, but it's it's a, it's a, 
it's a, it's a song a song by uh, Lil Nas and um, uh, and um, Cyrus where it's it has been on the top of the Billboard for the past six weeks. I don't know if you heard it. It's a it's a country trap song, and it's a new genre. So when you talk about a new genre, they're even not accepting this genre as a country song. But it's a beautiful song. It's a fun song to listen to. I'm giving you this example is because we listen to this song. We enjoy this song. Uh, yet there is also this debate somewhere else in the States where is this a country song? Is it, a, is it is not a country song? But we can't also deny that this is a song that we enjoy listening to. And it's a, a song that shows that there is an evolution of genres. Maybe there's an Emirati song that will, will, will sound like an R&B song, yet have its uh, own identity and words that reflects the challenges and opportunities that we're talking about. We should welcome whatever we get when it comes to a beautiful evolution of culture that we enjoy and related to uh, our identity. We all witnessed how technological advancement changed the way we um, consume information and changed the way our kids are. Uh, so our kids are now asking different questions. They're connected through a platform with different nationalities and different backgrounds. So for them, for our kids to be also exposed to that, this is an es the essence of why we also need to focus on, on kids and because they're, the, they're, they're basically the future. Uh, and technology is changing the way our kids are. It's changing the way our kids ask questions, look at different nationalities, diff different groups from different ethnic groups and whatever it is. Um, I feel in less than 10 years, our kids will feel that they're global, real global citizens before, uh, before anyone else. And that's because of the technology and how it's connecting everyone. We ask ourselves a question is when then when does the role of technology play in our cultural landscape? With digital landscaping and preservation, we are creating an archive of culture for the coming generations, safeguarding our common history and heritage for years to come. When talking about the future, we must focus on our textbooks in schools, what our kids are learning. Are they enjoying their arts class, their music class? Is cultural studies embedded in their curriculum? And, and, and this is an effort that we're working uh, on with the Ministry of, Higher, uh, of, of Education, uh, with the Minister of also uh, Public Schools, I mean, uh, Her Excellency Jamila, of how our curriculums should be fun. If a math um, exercise is tough to learn, maybe a dance or a the or, or, or a uh, or a performance would help it make it much easier. Um, and, and, and I feel this is what I was missing when I was a kid. It was just kind of boxed in its own classes, the art classes by itself, the music classes by itself. But, but how can we also um, blend the culture and art in terms of what, what we're doing or how are we educating our kids? When we look at a country as such as the UAE and how we have a diverse uh, population from different backgrounds, we have a duty also how to um, develop the knowledge. And this is where, um, where knowledge development uh, in, in the title of the ministry comes. Uh, this knowledge development is a duty not just for uh, UAE, uh, for Emiratis, but also uh, our residents. And it's how can we give also a great awareness, a great awareness about the Emirati community, a great awareness about the Indian community, about uh, different communities that are living in the UAE, uh, or even, and we, we don't want to tend and say, okay, this is the bigger, this community is a bigger community, therefore there will be more of, a, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, events. We tend also to showcase communities that are not that much, uh, um, uh, we know about um, and it will help also the Emiratis to explore other areas or travel to new places to develop their knowledge as well. We recognize that um, it is important for us to understand uh, the culture of different countries. Uh, it will help us be better, it will help us be more tolerant, it will help us also uh, have more empathy when it comes to different culture and the way you practice your work. So um, I remember a long time ago we were um, Four years ago, we were tasked to work with the Japanese, and the first question that we asked is, "Okay, how is it? How is the culture with working with Japanese? If I nod 
too much does it mean that the the deal is sealed and I don't want to seal the deal and then I would be in trouble so so those are kind of gestures and different way that we practice our meetings we conduct our meetings culture awareness and knowledge of that culture is so crucial um, and we shouldn't take advantage because maybe we have the upper hand or maybe because we you know it's this is the way we conduct business with other nationalities or with, uh, with other uh, 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 Emiratis I feel this is something that will make us also uh, more empathetic uh, uh, to, towards uh, those uh, individuals and build that knowledge and enrich it um, when we look at the UAE as a as a country um, and the map of the UAE we always want to see okay what is how is the cultural map looks like uh, so so from from a from a perspective of understanding the that landscape the sector the cultural and creative uh, uh, sector landscape what are the events that are happening what kind of policies that are also we have that we you know that can be helpful for other uh, places um, the training that is uh, that we can also offer uh, the UNESCO heard, uh, uh, registered sites uh, the tangible or intangible heritage there 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 is this kind of um, uh, missing angle when it comes to wanting to know everything uh, in one snapshot uh, and that is also uh, an initiative by the Ministry of Culture and Knowledge Development. We're going to launch the cultural map. It's going to be more of an application and a website. We're going to partner with our partners for the local entities to help us also insert the data that will help either uh, policymakers, either individuals who work on the culture, interested in the cultural scene, or also our visitors. There are entities within the UAE who are advanced and have their own application and websites. But we believe that it's important to have this one snapshot that will show you the UAE's uh, landscape in the cultural sector uh, and, and, and creative sector. Um, there is also um, a study that has been recently made. Um, uh, and we always talk about um, the importance of uh, Arabic language, uh, especially in, in, in a time where um, sometimes most of the kids, especially in cities uh, in Abu Dhabi and, and, and Dubai and, and maybe Sharjah, most of the kids are, um, at least people who I know, are in private, sec uh, private schools. Uh, so we have this challenge of the Arabic language with kids. And, uh, uh, and it's, um, it's, uh, we, we are to blame as well, because sometimes we, we tend to speak English to you know, get it you know, just answer the question and, and go on because kids tend to ask why 100 times. So you know, the, the quicker the better. Um, and plus, they are, uh, they are educated in such schools. So there was, a, there was, um, there was a, a study that is made by the UNESCO that looked at the importance uh, of, of the language, um, of the Arabic language. We are, in a, we are in a region uh, that we have more than 300 million speakers. Um, we, we're working on initiatives that will help also uh, have uh, Arabic content, mostly novels, um, such as audiobook. And uh, we supported an initiative called Maktabati. It was launched uh, during the Abu Dhabi uh, book fair. Um, we, we want to support more books, more uh, books to be written and, and to be also uh, issued within the UAE. Uh, 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 so we, the ISBN fee for the UAE-based publishers has been uh, waived. Um, and most importantly is going back to my to the challenge, kids, school, English, um, and especially with content that is that that is English and beautiful and, and cartoons and in books and there are certain nice initiatives in, in Arabic language but they are not as much as the English content and we all we all know that and and we try to also fix it from a, from with an initiative or a book or supporting um, a session in a class uh, yet um, there has to be also a diagnosis of why is it tough now to teach our kids Arabic easy because we learned the Shakespearean Arabic till today. It's the classical Arabic that we are learning and how we are uh, dissecting, looking at the words and how the word is, uh, is placed in a sentence and how does it look like with, with, uh, with uh, 
sorry, I don't know how, what Arab is in, in English. So Arab, Nahu, uh, the grammar is very rich, and we have a beautiful, rich language. Yet, uh, with the quick pace of everything that we see from our platforms, from the way that a different language evolved, especially the English language, it did evolve. It did evolve. With the Arabic language, we're still uh, stuck in the classical way of learning the language. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid announced uh, an initiative that we're working on, uh, we're working on, on at the Ministry of uh, Culture, that is the status of future uh, and future of the Arabic language. This study will help us to diagnose why it's tough to teach, I hope, our kids Arabic, the way, the style. I hope it will provide the solution for kids why this class shouldn't be conducted this way, why this book, why this textbook should be easier, what kind of content we should start off. And unfortunately, sometimes we would need to accept that it might be a second la language for it to be a first language. We need to look at all of those um, uh, possibilities and stop saying we are in risk. The Arabic language is disappearing. The Arabic language is fine. The Arabic language is spoken, <coughs> is practiced in many different countries. It's just in countries that are focusing, uh, that are multicultural, that the private sector, the private schools are, you know, uh, doing uh, doing well. You have your kids. You want to take them to a private school, and uh, and and there are many reasons, and I don't want to talk about the reasons, but. We want to also look at a solution for all. That solution is not just going to be for private schools, but also it's going to be for the public schools. And I hope it will provide that solution. Um, when talking about the way you promote culture, archive it, um, and a partner with, with entities uh, that are uh, well known in terms of the technological uh, perspective, we also tend to uh, make sure that we partner with, uh, with, with them, such as the Google Arts um, uh, uh, and Culture. There was, uh, there, was a, there was also a partnership with the National Archive uh, to, to, show how, to show the other gen the next generations or the current ones or, or let's say the audience who are outside of the UAE. How can we all, uh, how can we share our knowledge in a, in a, in a reputable uh, uh, digital platform. Another example that I would like to also to shed the light on is uh, the Zayed Gandhi exhibition. We worked on this exhibition. Um, uh, you know, uh, we do have a, a great uh, partnership with, uh, with India. Um, and it was important for us to show the parallel, value, the parallel values uh, that both leaders <coughs> share from different uh, time uh, frame from different backgrounds, but there was those simil similar uh, values between Gandhi and Sheikh Zayed that we wanted to show in a more of a different platform. We wanted um, individuals to, or kids as well, importantly, to have this immersive experience, to share knowledge, to contribute, to um, to look at how um, um, tolerance. Uh, what is the definition of tolerance? What, do, what, what does it mean uh, to, what, what does it mean to them? And when we, when we look at um, art, and, and, and as I said, with, with, you know, with, with, the, with the instability, with not just the regions, but in different parts of the world where, uh, unfortunately, there are, there are also those uh, extreme views in terms of certain ethnic groups or stopping people from uh, enjoying the benefits in a country they've been living in for more than, I don't know, their, their whole lifetime. So it's, 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 a, it's, a global, it's a global challenge that we need to look into. Um, and how art is, is also um, a tool uh, to, uh, to showcase the challenge and hopefully uh, to build harmony. Uh, between people. Uh, in 2009, uh, we, we, we are, as a UAE, we are the first Gulf country to have a permanent pavilion at the Venice uh, Biennial. Um, and that, that permanent uh, um, pavilion is, 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 is an important one, is an important platform to share our story, the stories of, the story of the UAE with the world. Two weeks ago, we were there. Um, it was beautiful to be uh, in Venice. Um, the, uh, the theme uh, was, may you live in interesting times, um, in a time when we are constantly surrounded by division. Um, 
it was it was how the biennial also uh, shed the light uh, of of an important, uh, especially our pavilion, of an important uh, artist um, and poet, Nujum al Ghanim. Um, so through her poetry, through her story, there was it was basically an installation of a, two videos, uh, one extremely and showing the. Um, uh, the fictional and realistic kind of a, of a story of a woman uh, that travels through her poetry and how she feels and um, um, and it was it, it, it was a, it's, it's that mix of technology uh, with the with the literature of 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 Nujum and the style of her storytelling um, through those mediums uh, it, it shows that that face of art of an Emirati uh, storyteller. Um, and the actress was a Syrian actress, um, so so both uh, different nationalities, and, and and a story that blended in a way that um, that is shed, uh, that is shown in an international art pro form. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm very proud that our pavilion also was listed in the must see pavilion uh, at the um, at the art newspaper in the Arsenali. So it's a proud moment for us, having the UAE being there since 2009. Uh, uh, constantly, um, you know, showcasing their work in art and architecture as well uh, is building uh, not just the story to showcase, but the literature that we work uh, behind, the books that we share with with different um, uh, uh, visitors uh, and our interns from the UAE who spend uh, an amount of time in Venice, um, and, and that experience by itself, it's a very strong program with the Salam Hamdan Foundation to also have this exchange um, and knowledge uh, that we built with the interns and also till the moment the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the biennial is, is, um, is conducted. The, the cultural industry uh, and consumers need to take into account also the documenting, documenting uh, um, how culture is evolving, how culture is, uh, how the storytelling uh, is, is, is something that is we in this region have, but we tend to um, think that uh, bless uh, our grandmothers or, or fathers that there is going to stay and just say the story and tell the story. But I, I feel it's really important for us to think of the future and, and how an oral uh, history is important and how uh, documenting those stories is important and uh, uh, keep, uh, having them for the next generations and building on those stories as well, whatever studies, whatever uh, studies that are maybe social impactful studies. Uh, it's, it's normal stories, it's historical, it's cultural, it's art. But also, they will help in, 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 in a research perspective. Um, uh, I mean, we used to, we used to uh, enjoy uh, the Polaroids or the Kodak moments. Uh, now we take pictures endlessly with our uh, phones, and we record voice notes and send voice notes. So there is this, each one of us is holding a museum. Um, <laughs> No, I sent this museum. <laughs> but I feel it's, it's also how can we think of how are you curating your museum? How are you looking into the pictures that you have, um, the places that you visited? Um, I don't know, a video of your grandmother, uh, a video of your father, or maybe sneaking the video. And you know, sometimes our parents hate saying the stories when they know someone is filming. How can we also curate that? And maybe say, okay, in the future, how would I share it with the next generation? Um, and you never know; you might be in the Louvre one day. So it just—it's just how can we also pay attention to technology and curating the content for a different medium that we are uh, still holding in our hands? And you think your information is still in your hands? So um, the UAE. Uh, and uh, the Ministry of the U, uh, of the Ministry, the Ministry of Knowledge uh, of Culture uh, launched uh, a festival recently. Uh, the festival is, I think we jumped. Yeah, the festival is uh, is a is a festival that looks into Islamic culture and art. Um, one of my favorite personally moments is having kids. Uh, I mean, they're like in their early twenties. Joining us in the festival, it was during the same time of the Prophet's 
uh, birth. They said it's the first time we feel that we're celebrating the Prophet birth through a festival that talks about Islamic art and culture. Uh, and yes, Islam has a dimension in art and culture, and clothes, music, food, geometry. Thank you. So, so this is where uh, we, 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 we transformed a competition of only calligraphy to a festival where we talk about those topics. Uh, also looking at Islam as a religion, it's not just a ritual, it's not just praying and fasting, but there's also that breadth of, um, of culture and art behind it. That helped uh, create a dialogue between a um, different uh, group of people from different uh, uh, age groups. Um, and it made also um, the youth be interested to know more about uh, Islam culture. We launched also during the festival um, uh, uh, Alberta Swarm uh, AI. Uh, so it's an artificial, an artificial intelligence assistance uh, research program uh, to predict the future. Uh, basically, we ask question live. Uh, uh, we ask the question of the growth in Islamic art and the influences. And at the same time, uh, we get answers with regards to um, to to that to, to that uh, to that. Uh, 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 question. So the takeaways was to, uh, to the insight of that investment in art programs plays a key role in developing artistic and creative skills. So there has to be investment. Uh, and also, uh, how can we also provide the proper legislation when it comes to enable uh, that sector? Um, and how also can we work in more training uh, and more partnership for that sector to flourish? So this is when you, I mean, this is where you equip technology and AI to answer your questions um, that you know you want them uh, uh, you want to understand that you, you don't want to wait for a survey. Uh, preserving heritage is, is not just a goal for us here in the UAE but also how can we support uh, other uh, countries within the region. Um, the recent tragedy in Mosul um, uh, unfortunately especially for a Nuri mosque um, uh, you know, you, you have the spirit of Mosul, especially its leaning Manarat has been uh, uh, destroyed. Um, and when we launched this project and with this, with, uh, with, you know, with, from the government of the UAE, with the uh, partnership with the UNESCO, when we launched this project, we, we flew to Baghdad. Um, and we thought we would be able to, little we know, we thought we'd be able to fly to Mosul and, you know, just be there in front of a Nuri Mosque and, this is what we're doing, but of course it's uh, it's still a war zone. It's uh, it's not that safe to be in Mosul. Uh, so we were. Um, this is just showing you how um, it was and how all of a sudden you don't see the. It just defines the the skyline of Mosul, and it's just it's you know heartbreaking, uh, and especially I'm sure for the Maslawis, for Iraqis, or for also us as individuals from the region that we relate to uh, a country. That was the beacon of education and of hope. Um, and I'm sure it's not just for the people from the region, for, for, for any person who, who feels that, uh, it's also a, a, a crucial element uh, uh, of history that we need to preserve and maintain. Um, so in the recent uh, visit, as I, I, as I mentioned, it was difficult for us to, uh, to go to the Nuri Mosque, uh, but surprisingly, I went to the Nuri Mosque, I walked in the Nuri Mosque, and I saw the walls of Nuri Mosque in Paris. And um, how did that happen? It happened at the Institute, uh, uh, um, the Arab Institute in Paris. There was this huge, beautiful um, VR exhibition. It's beautiful, but it shows um, heartbreaking images of, um, of what extremism destroyed from Palmyra, Aleppo, and, and, and Mosul. Um, it helped us to check the site, to see how it is, where the Manara wa was, and, uh, and now we're, we're meeting, uh, we're still having those meetings with our counterparts from the Ministry of uh, Culture in Iraq and the UNESCO to hopefully um, help bring it back. It's a five years project between the government of the UAE and the UNESCO and the 
uh, Ministry of Culture in Iraq. Um, uh, and I also am proud to say that post the Pope visit, we also announced that we're going to rebuild or reconstruct, uh, sorry, uh, two churches at the same block. So it will be the mosque and two churches uh, in Mosul. Um, uh, and an another uh, notable project uh, is uh, the Digital Archaeology Exhibition, which is an initiative by the Dubai Future Foundation. Uh, I was so happy to see His Excellency Omar al ulama in partnership with the UN and the Institute of Dig Digital Archaeology at the University of Oxford launching this important um, uh, um, e e exhibition. And, and I feel this is where, this is where also simply showing uh, the duty of you know, a responsible human being uh, of a responsible government uh, that wants also to, you know, to make sure that there is knowledge that we can access, access. There is, if something that is destroyed, how can I rebuild it with technology, with the 3D technology, and then rebuild it for, for real? Uh, so thank you for that, uh, Your Excellency. Um, I know we're going to shift to the majlis. Um, uh, I just want to uh, conclude uh, my talk uh, and, and, you know, and, and going back to my first question is in terms of what is culture. And um, I, I, I just, I don't want culture to overwhelm you or to overwhelm individuals who are working in the culture. Um, the most important thing is how can we take pride of our culture? How can we embrace other cultures? How can we also make sure that for me to have um, a culture that is um, that is different, uh, that is uh, unique, is sharing this culture, sharing this, the knowledge of this culture, uh, making other people understand why my culture is this way, why is my, uh, why do I talk this way, what kind of food, what kind of art, the talents that we have, the music that we enjoy. Um, it should be always a, a talk and a discussion that will enrich you. Even if you feel that you don't agree with a certain element of an art or a song, and you don't know what genre you're, you're gonna uh, place that song or that way of wearing your abaya or the kandora, I feel the most important thing is looking how can we embrace our culture and feel proud of it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.